Okay, there we are. Uh, yeah, that was me. I said 7 p.m. because I got confused when I scheduled this yesterday. It's not Monday, it's Thursday, which means 10 a.m., not 7 p.m. Okay. Apologies for any confusion. That's, uh, that's totally on me. Oh my goodness. Anyway, hello. I'm Linnell Ingram. Welcome to my channel, Paint Fumes. Uh, bi-weekly live stream Thursday mornings at 10 a.m. Uh, <laughs> gosh, amazing. Um, anyway, I hope everyone's doing well this morning. I am an artist. I um, do a lot of mixed media paintings. I make all kinds of things. I draw and do all kinds of things for the most part, but like my primary work is mixed medium. But I've been doing these kind of what, what I'm calling now a sketchbook lab, um, where I'm where my live streams are like, hey, let's fill up a sketchbook with things that I don't normally do, and try new things, and try different media, and start and try to learn, you know, pushing things in different directions. So I've used some gouache in my sketchbooks, which I don't normally use, even colored pencils. This is a mixed media sketchbook. I have a link to the same one in the um, description below, but mixed media by Strathmore. This paper is nice and heavy. Uh, it's heavy and it is like waterproof. So it handles um, paint well. Uh, I've even used oil paint on it and it will soak, the oil will come through the other side of it a bit, but it's pretty good. Um, yeah, so this has been like a little book of random studies and I post the photos that I'm going to work with and if you like, draw along, sketch along, paint along, whatever. Um, today I picked a vase with two flowers in it because I've never in my life been a person who enjoyed like drawing flowers, um, never gone out of my way to do so. So, there, try to get myself better frame there. I know I give myself a little tiny corner today because the picture is very long. Okay. Yes, I don't usually do flowers. It's not my thing, but, um, you know, it's just another drawing skill. It's another um, just observational, learn how to create something, recreate things that you're looking at, all those things, you know, just skills with painting and drawing and... <laughs> All of that. Can you tell I haven't had enough coffee yet this morning? Ah, anyway. Yeah, so here we are. And I'm going to actually, uh, because I'm fairly familiar with it, I rarely work with acrylic in this little sketchbook, but I am going to use acrylic today. Um, I pulled out some of my paints and I just need to get ugh, a palette. And I just have my little handy little paper palette over here. Now, when I was at uh, last weekend, I went to the Renegade Craft Show here in uh, in Chicago. And the one of the, the things I got for myself, because I've watched people make these, different folks do this sort of thing, uh, like on live, um, online, like in videos and such, but I got myself a little ceramic um, dish, a little uh, palette. Okay. I've got new lights. It's a uh, DIY LED lights. So I need to actually turn down my, there we go. Turn down my ISO a little bit. Cause that's a little, that was a little too bright with my new light set up. Yeah. Cause he had lights, but I didn't change the camera. There we go. That's better. So hopefully I'll actually be able to see what I'm drawing. Um, and I'm going to, and I made, I am making a video. I've been filming the process of building this light. Um, and it was, it's been pretty cheap and, uh, well, it's incredible for light over your workspace. Uh, quite nice. Anyway, yes, I have this, but I, I don't, I haven't used it yet. I think I'm almost afraid to start using it because, you know, it's, uh, you, don't, you hate to mess it up, right? Anyway. Okay. Oh, so we're going to start with drawing. And this is a very like long, narrow image. I 
have it up on my screen in front of me next to the chat so I can see what's going on. And so it's going to, because this is pretty small paper, this is like a half sheet, basically. Um, it'll be pretty, pretty small on here, but I've, it's kind of fun to work that way a little bit, even though it adds, definitely adds a lot of um, extra challenges. So very lightly just blocking in real quick some of my approximate shapes before I start getting into any detail. Like just see if things are more or less okay. One thing with drawing something like plants versus people, which I often do people, is they can be far more forgiving. If you don't have something entire exactly right, it's not going to be like, you know, the end of the world. <laughs> Unlike a person whose eye is in, when eye is in the wrong place. Okay. And then there's a second flower over here. I said, hello, hello, hello. How are you today? I was just saying how I have my DIY LED lights up and working today. So very excited about that. It's quite bright. It's quite, uh, quite lovely lighting, really. So I will be finishing pretty soon the video of me making it and like what I did, what I used. Kept it pretty cheap. A few things didn't work as well as I'd hoped they would. Some things ended up being I didn't need to be as complicated as I was doing it. So yeah. Light dome, light arc, whatever you want to call it. It's pretty cool. Um, and it's not the most gorgeous thing. Uh, but the light it creates is quite gorgeous. <laughs> so, yeah. All right. I think I'm okay with where my approximate things are so I can start making more of a proper... Like, yeah, much less shadows. I actually had to, I forgot to adjust the camera for the new light because I just created this yesterday or get it, got it all set up yesterday. And uh, it was all um, like just crushed. The whites were just crushed. I had to crank down the ISO a little bit a few minutes ago. No big deal. But yeah, that's kind of nice because it should be a crisper image then too because if you have to have your ISO set up, very high, then you tend to get a lot of distortion. You can't tell how ugly it looks, yeah. <laughs> well, when, I mean, it's not entirely ugly. It's just, I mean, it is, it's just, um, it's not like a decorative light. It's very functional. Um, and when it's on, it looks great when it's on. And pretty cheap all in all a lot cheaper than buying uh, like a daylight desk lamp so I will compile my costs and supplies and try to get that posted up pretty soon when it comes to making videos things always take me much longer than I expect them to <laughs> and that's uh that's me with everything in life very much so Like, oh, learn how to uh, program a software? Sure, I can learn that in like a week, right? That's, see, that's how my head works. No problem. No problem. Okay, I actually wonder if I could turn this down even one more. Let's give it a try and see. So that, no, oh, that was the wrong direction. That might be a little bit better. Now the same lighting is lighting me and it's very uh, intense it, but I just use like a little webcam for myself so it's a lot harder to do the um, adjusting effects. I can I guess I can go in and play with some filters uh, in OBS. Uh, I'm currently sketching by fake candlelights so you got enough light for both of us. Awesome. <laughs> Yeah, that's not the best, is it? 
yeah, I can always adjust it as I need to. It's a quick, luckily there's just a little knob on the, the camera I have where I can just like quickly like adjust my ISO real fast. And I, like our, my living room has terrible lighting, really, really terrible lighting. I've always struggled with trying to get it right. Um, I did get a really strong la like floor lamp in there with three lights in it. And then I like went as high as I could with the wattage in them. And that's like crazy bright. But nobody likes when I turn it on because there are these uh, shades that hang and they have no diffuser on the bottom. So it looks like you're like in an interrogation practically when they're on. It's like a spotlight on you if you're sitting in a chair near there. Uh, so even though it's really good lighting, it hasn't been as useful as I'd hoped it would be. I'd like affordable. It's got to be affordable too is a thing. Like, you know, not made of money over here. Um, but yeah, I, anytime I decide to draw or anything when I'm sitting in the living room, it's just the worst lighting. It's absolutely terrible. And I'm getting to a point where low light definitely affects my ability to see well. Like I, details and things are just, if it's not super bright, mm -mm. <laughs> I can't read that tiny little five point text if there's not at least semi decent lighting going on. And some packaging these days, the, the text is like a two point or something, three point, like, come on, who reads that at all? And if there's not like the sun's rays shining directly on it, you know, six billion Kelvins of it, I'm, I can't read that stuff anymore. So I don't know if that's like just me getting old or if that's just like packaging designs gotten weird. It could be a little bit of both. Okay. Ah, flowers. Not my favorite things to draw or paint, but that's why we're going to try. This candlelight isn't so bad. I've got good eyes, and it also means I can't get lost in the details, so I sketch and focus on shapes, etc. But yeah, in my lunch study area, I need good light. Yeah, that's actually true. That's totally true, that if you're working in not great light, it does force you to... Um, let go of some of that stuff that you can get caught up in. Very, very true. So it always just depends then on, on your intentions, what you're trying to accomplish, all that fun stuff. But yesterday was an interesting day. I uh, had posted on my Instagram account, finally, the painting that I mostly finished on stream about Overwhelm, the mixed media piece. I finally had the good photo of it and got around to, f to posting the finished thing. I made like a little reel about it. And the next morning, which was yesterday, I got up and I had found my uh, Instagram account was locked because of that post being uh i was told like it said it was uh inappropriate and my account was locked nobody could see anything man really seriously for showing my art <laughs> right uh so i did this uh you can like um protest it or whatever their decision because i don't know how much of it is ai or maybe somebody says I'm offended by this and it just automatically blocks it. I don't know. So I did that and I don't know. I've, I haven't seen if anything's changed on there yet. I don't know if they tell you or how soon they tell you. <sighs> but yeah. And they have, like, I know. Yeah, dispute. That's the word. Um, and I, oh, hello, Jim. Hello to all. I'm at the Electric Mud Cafe. 
Hope I'm not hogging their bandwidth. Ah, <laughs> that's okay. They can. That's what they offer Wi-Fi for, right? <laughs> hmm. Yeah, I did the dispute of that, um, and I don't know how long it takes for me to find out anything on that. But yeah, that totally locked down my account. And they have a uh, published policy that says that, like, on, yeah, okay, there's a nudity in it because I painted a form, but, but a figure, it's not in any way offensive or it's not even remotely sexual, like, not even remotely. So their policy does say that they allow it in, like, paintings and sculptures. So based on their own policies, their own published policies, there should not be a problem with it. But, I don't know. Who reviews stuff, how long it takes to happen. And then you always hear those awful stories about the poor people who are in the positions of having to, like, moderate content on social media platforms. Make people last a few months and then they leave with some not so insignificant PTSD from it because of what they're exposed to. It's really crazy. Sounds like a nightmare. The hardest part I have with doing flowers, things like this with lots of layers of detail, is keeping track of where I am. My mind tends to be kind of inherently uh, impatient and bored with things quickly. So that can make it uh, difficult to stay focused on where exactly I am and what I'm looking at. <laughs> So the intention is to paint this guy, so I'm not too worried about like adding in lots of shading necessarily. And I've been realizing I need to make a list. I'm getting low on some paints. And I'm going to have to make a little stop at the art supply store. And do a little restocking, which, you know, it's always like a split thing of being both awesome because, yay, new art supplies. Um, and also terrifying because, holy cow, that took all my money. You know? <laughs> Mixed bag in that way. So I tend to put it off a little bit, which is also a mixed thing because the longer I wait to go, the more things I need, the more expensive the trip is. And it doesn't help that I've been working in, in a lot of different mediums, so... I don't know, I suppose that no, whether I'm working in a bunch of different mediums or not, you're gonna... You're using those... the paint in something or another, so... Either way...
and I have a couple really big canvases. Um, at least to me, they're really big. They barely fit in my studio. <laughs> um, 32 by 48 canvases. And I'd really like to work on those, but I was thinking about yesterday just how much paint and materials it'll take just to cover. I have three of them. Um, how much materials it's going to take just to cover those. No matter what I do. And I had a little moment. <laughs> Definitely had a little moment there. So yeah, I'm not, I guess I'm not in a big hurry to work on them when I have so many other things going on and, and quite frankly, painting started and not finished, but uh, all the things you want to do all the time, <laughs> you know, <laughs> uh, get it. Being an artist, especially a consistently practicing one, isn't cheap. That is true. It is true. And it's hard to, I suppose there's not much you can, that is easy to make at all. It doesn't have some kind of materials cost to it. Maybe if you're just doing purely digital stuff. But even then, generally, you'll at least have like probably software subscriptions and things along those lines too. I actually have some of the software subscriptions and the physical medium cost. <laughs> uh, yeah, good times. I'm always fascinated with the potential of getting of getting rid of uh, not having to have like Adobe. I have the Adobe Cloud. Um, because it is pricey, and there's going to be more alternatives available. Because I, I use Premiere for editing my videos, but I also use um, use Photoshop a lot for, well, of course, thumbnails for one, but uh, other work related to design stuff that I sometimes do. Um, editing photos of paintings. And yeah, freelance design work in general is like Illustrator, some Photoshop. Definitely um, a lot of Illustrator, but also some InDesign sometimes. And I think the real appeal to keeping the Adobe Cloud is that I, when I'm familiar with the programs, because I've used them for forever, and and they all integrate so nicely. Which makes it kind of hard to take the time to like kind of figure out and learn different a different suite of software or different types of software and see how well they work together and how well they work as opposed to that. So that's what almost sixty bucks a month now for Adobe Suite. So you know every little bit adds up. And I, I do really like their software, but it is hard to have everything costing something.
I'm going to hold this up for just a moment to try to adjust some of my lines and shapes here a little better. Used to use Adobe Suite on a daily basis for 15 years in last career. Yeah, same. Then closed up shop and now feels weird to use it. I want more tactile stuff. Stop this. Hello, hello. Linnell, what's your camera set up for these lives? Have you talked about that? I want to know. <laughs> I can actually do a really quick switch over here. Let me see. If you guys wanted to see. Let me do a quick, also, I'm going to set up my phone camera on. Sorry, I didn't mean to actually switch it yet. I, it's going to take me a second to do that. Let me then instead just turn my, this camera. And screen USB. No, I don't have it set up to do that. Sorry, guys. Um, I don't have it set up to show you, but what I have <laughs> is a DLSLR. DSLR, I have a C stand above with it mounted on a tripod. Um, and that's looking down at my table. And then I have an arc light that I just built for LED lighting and it just goes right. It comes about this close to the camera, but I have it set so the camera's just in front of it. I have a USB camera in front of me. You can see it from here on a little Gobi, Joby, Gorilla stand. That's just a little USB cam. I have my HyperX mic that is a little bit in frame here that you guys always hear me knocking my brushes into. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I have a, a little older, it's an EOS 80D Canon camera is what I'm using for the top down shot. And everything's going through OBS, which is a, a pretty nice little software that's not too hard to get going on. There's a lot it can do if you want to get complicated with it, but what am I running through to get them connected to OBS? Uh, the camera, I have a little set that uh, I can, I've converted the battery pack into a, an AV out so that uh, I can just plug it in. I don't have to worry about recharging batteries or time limits on that. And the I have an HDMI out going to a capture card. The capture card goes in USB into the computer and rec is recognized by OBS through the capture card. Um, everything else, uh, all my other connections, the webcam, the mic, they're all USB. I don't have, it's not terribly fancy, but yeah, then it's just uh, setting them into OBS and it recognizes them almost right away. It's pretty good, pretty, pretty easy. Needs just a few little specialized things. Like my microphone is just a USB microphone, USB webcam for having a shot on me. Looks and works great. Thank you. It's taken some time and tweaking, <laughs> but we're getting it there. There's always, always tweaking to be done. Always, always can make it better. And Jim used to use Illustrator. I used Illustrator, Photoshop, and InDesign in the before times. <laughs> Need to get back to it. Yeah, I use those every like era set every day for many years working in design and i use them less less regularly as that was but it's still pretty it's still regularly enough that i feel like i would need to be pretty comfortable with an alternative to walk away from them and also one of the things 
I'm not as familiar with it as I would like to be. I'd like to learn better, but um, After Effects as an Adobe program for adding in effects, animations, and things. That's something that I have I play with a little bit. I'm not super comfortable with it yet, but I would like to learn to use it more. And I don't know. I know that there's alternatives for Illustrator. I know there's alternatives for Premiere and, of course, Photoshop. Um, but there's... Uh, I don't know that there's a good alternative for After Effects and then the integration between After Effects and Premiere. Um, I've even, I've even used Audition a couple times for trying to get my sound set up well, <laughs> which is always, which has been like an up and down backwards battle sometimes trying to get the sound right. Uh, you guys that have been with me for a while know, know how that's gone. Tonight I'm going to the makerspace to get authorized on the laser cutting etching machine. So I will use vector AI files for or who knows what. Oh, <laughs> awesome. Yeah, I could definitely see, yeah, that sort of thing it's really good for. I can imagine um, uh, 3D printing, um, laser cutting, all of those areas for sure. But I, I remember in college, I hated working with vector files. Like, it just didn't gel with me. I didn't under, I, I couldn't really wrap my head around. I mean, I was also, it was also early days of some of this stuff. Um, and I was an illustration major and there wasn't like a dedicated learn how to illustrate using Illustrator class or anything like that. It was just like, I don't know. Anyway, it was uh, not something I was comfortable until I actually got a job using it every day. And then I got really comfortable with it and could do some pretty complicated stuff um, using it pretty comfortably. And yeah, I, I've tried, I don't know, have I actually tried something outside of Illustrator? I know, that, I think what it was is I tried the Illustrator um, app for the iPad and I hated it. <laughs> I just like, I'm trying to be able to work, you know, rem not always sitting at my computer and that just I just gave up and I'm like forget this I'm going to my desktop <laughs> it's not working well at all yeah so you know you try things and it takes time to learn new software even if it functions basically the same things are going to be in different places things are going to be a little bit different it's always going to be a little bit of like needing to put the time aside to dedicate. So I did at one time download um, DaVinci, the DaVinci uh, streaming, not streaming, video editing. I downloaded it, but I never used it. I know a lot of people that really like it. I haven't delved into research on it tremendously. But it, at some point, it might be worth doing that. My nearly empty tube of white. I have a new one ready to go, but don't waste anything if you can't help it. Because, like I said before, isn't that cheap? <laughs> okay, looks like... It looks like it's time. All right, let me grab my new tube here. One of the advantages to a tiny studio is I can just uh, spin around and grab anything that I need. It's right within arm's reach. Off to a meeting, but I'm sending tons of love your way. Lenali, you're doing amazing. I'm loving your piece so far. Thank you. Thank you, uh, uh, Lennon and... Same to you. It's good to see you here. All right, here we go. Lots of white paint. That might be more than I need for this. Okay. Probably not more than I need. We'll see. Okay. Okay. 
I am always paranoid, especially when it comes to acrylic type paints, of not putting out the correct amount, putting out too little, too much. And I think I tend to these days often put out too little of the things that I need. I just hate to waste it because it dries on your palette, which makes it really uh, frustrating. And you feel wasteful and it's, you know, it's an investment. Your paints are, you know, something you have to pay for. So I always try to be careful with it, but with my acrylic paints or even ugh, even the acrylic gouache that always is a bit of a paranoia and one of the reasons that I really got into a lot of watercolor painting because with that you don't have to worry about it if it's on your palette it'll stay there for years and years and years until you just use it because it just dries and then you wet it and then it dries and then you wet it and so on forever and ever <laughs> so that's what got me in the last few years working with more watercolor a lot of the time and now i'm experimenting with other things too with oil paints you don't have to worry about it i mean it will eventually dry on your palette but it'll be good for a while if you also, don't go crazy putting too much on and all that kind of thing. All right, here we go. And I got some Payne's Gray, one of my favorite dark neutrals. Depending on like the tone of a piece, I will almost always use either Payne's Gray or Dioxine Purple as my my black, so to speak. I just like the richness that they give. Okay, so here we go. Yeah, so cool, Jim. Close, so close to being an etching pro. Yeah, that's it is. I would love to like see how it goes and and what you do with it. I saw one artist this last weekend at, again, the Renegade Craft Show who did a lot of the et etchings. Sorry, I thought putting the mic on this side would save it from my brushes, but we still got to be a little careful here. Okay. Try moving those out of the way. I just did my own quick sketch with of this with fine liner and markers. Good to try new things, as you said. Awesome. Heck yeah. I have such little desire to ever paint. Can you accept the mic abuse? I'm glad. <laughs> ah, yes, that's for my own neglect and uh, clumsiness of just abusing my chat here. Sorry, guys. All right, where to start? Maybe. Get some of this. I'm actually thinking to work kind of my way down a little bit just to start with in terms of like where I'm wet, laying the wettest areas of paint and then working into some background and working back around again after that with more uh, detail and refining. That's my plan. We'll see if I stick to it. This kind of looks like maybe a, the darker tones of the pinks, maybe. This is my first time putting down my acrylic paints in this sketchbook, so kind of interested to see if it feels any different, because they're, they're the paints I've used for the longest part of my life um, since I was in grade school, I guess. That's the paints we would use. Uh, yeah, um, so I'm the most probably comfortable working with working with acrylic. Second would be watercolors.
so then I can kind of have an actual comparison of how it feels to put these down on this paper versus versus canvas or whatnot. Also, I hope you're not like hearing me breathe heavily into the mic. I am a little congested today. We have that nice fallish weather. There's people out mowing today. Thursday morning seems to be the day they mow across the street. Um, so I'm definitely experiencing some kind of allergy congestion mildly. So I hope that I'm not like traumatizing anybody by breathing awkwardly into the microphone as well. <laughs> That was weird. Light just dimmed and then came back on. Huh. Okay, fingers crossed that that's not some weird power thing. Computer didn't shut down or anything, so... This is when you double down, tell everyone it's ASMR and charge five bucks a minute. You might be onto something. <laughs> you don't hate the idea. <laughs> yeah, the ASMR thing, I never entirely understood. I never quite understood that whole fascination. Is that like still a thing? Do people still really get into that? I don't even know. very out of the loop with what the kids are into these days. I saw a new horror today. Ooh. About teens using a cursed hand. Oh, I remember seeing... This is a new one, right? I saw... Um, I know that I saw some previews for that. That sounds... I'm pretty sure. Was it good? What did you think? Recommend? I'm still waiting for that latest, um, gosh, there's so many movies on my watch list and I'm just like waiting to not have to pay an arm and a leg to see them. <laughs> Like the the red door, the insidious movie. Sounds like the hand of Vecna from Dungeons and Dragons. It was good. Highly, highly graphic. Full warning. That doesn't usually bother me. Um, the graphic stuff. I mean, I watch way too many horror movies. Hand of Ve Vecna. I recognize from Stranger Things, right? Because the kids do the, uh, the kids are D and D playing, and uh, that's one of the things that comes into existence through their whatever. I don't know. It's been a while since I've watched it, but it seems to me that that was the name of a, a monster on there. Okay, I have about not. Uh... 
not really though I'm familiar with that one. It's more like a Ouija board hand. Ah, <laughs> you'd think they'd know better. Yeah, right? <laughs> um, yeah, I never personally played a lot of Dungeons and Dragons. I had friends who were really into um, that gaming, things like that, and I would occasionally be around at some point and make a character for something. But uh, I I remember the one, one time that I tried and I don't remember what game it was. It might have been uh, something with the Cthulhu monster. And I remember the game person saying something like oh you you see him and it's so horrible that i don't know you go crazy you die something uh this was a really long time ago so forgive my very poor memory i remember just being like why what's so horrific about it why like describe it to me explain it to me why why and i didn't get a satisfactory answer and i'm just like well this is silly <laughs> I don't get it. I will admit that I, in high school, was had a period where I was really into Magic the Gathering card game. And I know that, um, I know one of the reasons, like I, I actually enjoyed playing it. We had, had a little group of friends that would do that. And um, I really loved the artwork because at the time I was big time into um, that kind of fantasy illustration. I really enjoyed that, which is funny because I've completely kind of switched around from that in terms of what I like and enjoy in, in art, but got to touch on a little bit of everything sometimes. Ouija board A, I have a Ouija mouse pad. Oh, oh. now if you had the Ouija mouse, if your mouse was like the they call the thing that moves on the board that would be really cool um but the mouse pad too okay i should have one i haven't used a mouse pad in years but i love it <laughs> that's great and i always even as a kid i thought like i would mess around with friends who would you have a sleepover some friend brings over a ouija board i never had one myself my parents probably thought it was just some silliness but uh yeah, I'd be the one. I would be the one that would make the thing move. Because let's have something happening here. Freak out your friends. And the fact that it was such a thing that people were so concerned about, it's like... My friends, this is a game board manufactured by Hasbro pretty sure that it isn't actually any connection to uh, demons or anything but you know that's just me i use a mac yeah oh i'm a total mac sucker i'm mac universe 100 percent jim summoning demons every time he boots his computer <laughs> all right I, can, I see where we're going but yeah that is kind of that that is great <laughs> I've had computers that I'm pretty sure have had demons in them. Not that I don't believe in demons, but I've had some computers. <laughs> you know? Oh, goodness. Although, I mean, I, I used to be a PC person. We're talking centuries ago. <laughs> but, uh... Yeah, I never understood. I went to art school and everything was Max, and I'm like, man, these these are so um what was it? I didn't like that they had such little crossover and what kind of software you could run on them at the time. It's a long time ago. This, that, and the other things. Expensive, blah blah blah. All the arguments you hear. And I always built my own, I built my own computers for years. I probably have built something like 20 computers over the course of my life for not just myself, but 
other people that I knew and friends, family, whatever. And the last time I built a Mac was for my partner back, back about 11 years ago. And after that, I swore I never would never do it again because Microsoft is just such a nightmare to work with. And I, I mean, what can I say? I've become one of those people. I love my Mac. I love the, the world that, um, of integration that it has, that one component, that one piece of the, whatever you have, a phone, something integrates so well with the other. And while it is, yes, it's more expensive, it lasts forever. Like I had a, I upgraded my computer when I started doing video stuff. Cause I, at that point I had I, iMac Pro and it was 10 years old. And it wouldn't run Premiere. It couldn't quite run Premiere. So I had to upgrade it, but it still worked. So I actually gave that computer to my mom, who is still using it. That computer is like 13, 14 years old, and it's still working great for her. She doesn't need it for anything like major difficult or hard stuff to run, but it's it works terrific for her. For what she needs so that that computer that i had gotten back in like 2009 maybe is still working <laughs> i am one of those people i know my partner needed a computer recently and uh we did decide to get him ultimately a mac um which he's kind of was like so one of those people was like i'm never ever doing that and we got him a Mac, a MacBook Pro, and it's just been a lot of one of us, one of us, one of us. <laughs> and I get it. Like you, you like people like to use what they're, you use what you're comfortable with. It was, uh, I made the switch because I had to for work. Like I went and worked at a place where they have Macs and because for a long time it was considered Indian industry standard for design, maybe less so now. So that's what I had. I had to learn how to use it begrudgingly. But once I really got into it, I just, I liked it enough to stick with it. And that's the story of how I became one of those people. <laughs> yeah, for a long time, I had no interest and didn't understand it. But yeah, once I got that last time, the last time I tried to build a PC, that just put the nail in the coffin for me. Like, yeah, this is a nightmare. And we had issues with uh, the software he's using and the forced updates with Microsoft. And it just became this like whole nightmare situation. And like, yeah, I don't want to deal with that anymore. It's all crazy. HP Lovecraft and the Lovecraftian stories are about cosmic horror. That's where people experience something that reveals the vastness of the cosmos. Yeah, I think that's definitely when I tried the to play the one time what it was the kind of thing, but they didn't communicate that in, in a way that I was like, okay, I understand why. So that it just. It didn't do it for me back then. Like I said, very long time ago. Very, very, very long time ago.
Okay, I'm getting, let me lay in some color on my little vase and then I got to start laying in some of the background. It's weird, makes them realize how minuscule the individual is in the universe and they lose their mind. I think I've come to terms with that, with being a little ant. <laughs> Nothing means anything. It's all fine. And it's okay. Nothing has to mean anything. Coffee break. Ah, I need a warm up. <clears throat> there was a um, series recently, wasn't there? Like a Lovecraft series on one of the... I don't know, it was probably like Showtime or something that I don't have access to. Something along those lines. It's been a long time since I've like read um, some of the old kind of classic horror stuff. I did a lot when I was younger. Um, for a really long time, I considered Mary Shelley's Frankenstein to be one of my favorite books. It was so bleak. And uh, talked about uh, so many things. I just really, I really enjoyed it. And I think, honestly, the last time I read it probably was around the time I was in I think I was in high school, maybe, the last time I read it through. Okay. What are you happy with that color? Oh, where's my clip? I don't know. There we go. Stop moving. Okay. Oh yeah. One other thing I was thinking about was that when I was at the, the Renegade, I think I started this, there was an artist there and I grabbed her card to look her up and I, because I really liked her work, but I didn't have the budget to buy anything um, from her. So it was mostly like a she did it was prints that she was selling like very beautiful prints some original stuff but it was all etchings um and it and i remembered when i was there how when i was in when i was in art school i did take a class in printmaking and i remember doing like we did lino cuts and i i, I loved the class so much and i've done a couple of linoleum cuts since then Actually, in the last couple of years, some couple of really small ones, but I remember doing the etching with the metal sheet and it has that coating on it and you'd etch away at it and then submerge it in the chemicals. And yeah, I really, I loved that process so much, but then it was an electives class that I had taken and I didn't have really, like, there wasn't really another opportunity to take more printmaking classes unless you were also majoring or even minoring in it. And I didn't know what the heck I was doing back then, so... Yeah, really. There's some, I don't know, what is it about making prints that's so satisfying? I would like to use Raspberry Pi eventually. Maybe I'll make a smart mirror display with time and weather. Oh, that's cool. That would be really neat. That's something I've never played with either. It sounds like such a cool, versatile thing. It runs on, like, Linux, right, I think? I don't know. There's some really amazing things that we can do and play with and... It's just the age-old frustration of 
having enough time to try all the things you want to try and do all the things you want to do. Learn all the things. I want to learn all the things. I want to. I want to know how to do all of the things. And yet, I never feel like there's enough time in the day to even do the most basic things. And today, on my to-do list, must do laundry. Like, I have to write it into my schedule, because otherwise it won't get done. I've also been working at trying to adjust my, um, or manage my uh, paint thinner for when I'm oil painting, which requires you to have a few different jars where you're pouring one thing into another thing and trying to get the solids out. And so I'm trying to do a better job of doing that kind of thing and learning how to do that. So just, you know, the simple tasks. Studio management, I guess. It should be is it maybe the technical term, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. I have time but not enough energy. Energy isn't the other really important component to all of that. Because that's a problem for me as well. And it can just be like you're going about your day, everything's fine, and it's like somebody switches, flips a switch. And it's like, I just can't seem to function anymore at a certain point and I hate it and I'm tired of being tired very sick and tired of being tired okay let's start getting in The background next. Yeah, well, mo most people run on a car battery. I run on a four AA batteries. Oh man, <laughs> yeah. area, and I'm sorry. It is frustrating, isn't it? just the it's it's like a cosmic joke like you can do all these things all these things exist for you and you have and if you have the time even it's and then you just can't physically do it for whatever whatever it is it's so incredibly frustrating And that's like, as much as I, I'm okay with being a little ant in the universe and all that kind of thing. Life is meaningless, whatever. Um, the, the issue of not being like, you know, you have one life to live and at least that's how I see things and If you can't make the most of what you have, what you've been given, and what um, what's available to you, it's just incredibly frustrating.
It really is because when I get those batteries to run, I can work real hard really well. But then recovery takes a long time. Yeah, and uh, and the the thing of when you actually have the energy, and then it's like, well, I have it. I have to make the most of it. So you probably run yourself a little harder than you ought to. So then the recovery is harder and it doesn't last as long. So um, I struggle with learning to manage that energy to not treat it like an all or nothing thing when it comes about. And I, I really struggle with that. I'm not good at it. Now that the heat in Chicago has gone away, I feel more energy, not wilted and soaked in sweat. That does help. I agree with you, Jim. Um, fall is my season. <laughs> fall is when I'm really happy. Uh, and it feels like, yeah, I can actually exist in this world a little bit more. I do think that makes a difference. Although it's felt a lot like, um, I've had a lot of, let's say like inflammation stuff lately and it's very annoying. That's gotta feel amazing. I The fall is the best. It is my favorite season like across the board between the weather and like an inherent slowdown that seems to start happening. There's just less going on. There's less happening. You can make slow cooker meals. <laughs> it just is uh, so much better. I don't go apple picking, but I do like to go to the apple orchards and pick up some cider donuts and apples and all that kind of thing. It's just that time of the year. There's just something different in the air. And of course, Halloween. Not that I need ever an excuse but to watch scary movies, but then it's just, you know, a good excuse. I haven't watched anything this week since my last stream on Monday. Just been tired, man. Like in the evening, finally settled down. It's like, yeah, I can't even think to like try to pick something out. So don't even care what's on the TV. Or try to read, maybe. Reading's nice. <laughs> I always mean to do a lot more reading. It's, uh, but my stupid ADHD brain, like, needs everything to be just a certain way to be able to, like, focus on reading. Otherwise, I'm just, like, rereading the same passages over and over and over and nothing is absorbing or registering. I'm going home out of the Wi-Fi for a little while. Yeah, it sounds... Enjoy the weather, Jim. And and I can't wait to hear how the uh, printmaking stuff goes. That is very amazing that you're doing it, and I love it. Definitely looks like I'll be able to beef up some of my dark shades on this now that I'm 
laying in the the background tone everything that i put down looks too light I think, speaking of, like, the cooler weather, this is probably the first time in months, <laughs> many months, that I've had on anything with sleeves. Because it was just cool enough this morning. It feels weird. And now that I'm thinking about it, I feel warm. <laughs> I'm going to say I do like the way the acrylic goes on this paper. It's smoother than going on to um much smoother than going on to canvas. Not as smooth as painting on like a board. But it is quite nice. There's lawn mowers outside. This is my kind of weather for sure to have the windows open. Because I don't think it's humid out at all either. And the humidity is like my kryptonite. I hate it. <laughs> it's so uncomfortable. Another thing with the fact that of painting flowers, I'm so, I've tried to have plants, like over the last couple years, I've been trying to grow plants in the house and it's tough because I have all east facing windows and a lot of those windows also have overhangs, so we get very little daylight, very little sunlight, direct sunlight. And on top of that, I just seem to be deadly to plants. It makes me kind of sad, but I have killed a lot of plants this year, and I get so angry when I, like, all of a sudden some plant that I thought was, like, coming along... And it's just, oh, today it's dead. It went from, like, doing okay to it's just dead now. And it makes me think that I should stop trying, stop buying plants and bringing them home to die to a terrible demise. But, I don't know. At least in the fall, if the, <laughs> they kind of slow down a little bit and maybe settle in and I won't kill as many of them. I just only, I am down to one, two, technically four plants now. And it was three, but I replaced one. <laughs> Poor thing. Bringing it home to its demise. Trying, I'm not trying to. I try, legitimately try to keep them going. And I just think the combination of just me being me and the sunlight, they just aren't, it's, uh, it's difficult to keep them going. It's like, man, I can't even keep plants alive. What am I doing? I have one plant that's like 10 years old. It's a philodendron. 
and it does well. You're the same, always struggle with plants. Really, like, like plants make the space, you know, alive and they're good for, good for you and the air and all the things. My philodendron that is doing pretty well is that is 10 years old almost had a hard time because when I brought my kitty home when he was a little guy, you know, it's got the, the vines that hang down. Oh, that was just way too much temptation. So uh, it lost some of its, <laughs> some of its leaves right off the bat, uh, but it's recovered well. Because we've had Watson here nearly two years. And besides that, I do have... I have a little tiny spider plant. It's actually over here by me. Here she is. Not much to her, but she's still alive. Sorry. And uh, that was a cutting that a friend gave me from this, like, jungle of spider plants that they have. So I have those. I have this monstera that is it grows like a weed, but it's so freaking leggy. Like it's just, I need to trim it back and I've been afraid to do so. And then so I finally read up about it, but I really now need to wait till the spring to do that. Um, we're in the wrong season too, but it's got it's crazy, crazy leggy. And anytime my poison finger seems to come, my poison black thumb, when I try to repot things, especially, I have a way about it. <laughs> Just doesn't ever seem to go well and I don't I try to do all the things right I look I watch videos on it even like how do I keep my plants alive how do I properly do this that and the other thing and after a while you're like I think it's just me I think it's me <laughs> I think that I just have I'm gonna be hard to keep my plants alive There is an artist who's uh, who does flower still lifes that I do quite enjoy, where they incorporate a lot of uh, other weird things into them that you don't necessarily notice at first. It's that uh, in in the style of that uh, hmm, what is it, Veritas? Uh, is that right? Am I saying that right? The Dutch still life painters from like the 1700s where it was all like black a lot of black still lifes and then there would be like elements of death involved skulls meat so he does think these paintings with these like gorgeous like colorful arrangements of flowers. And then there was always something going on in them. Um, like, so McDonald's food containers. Just random things like that. Like modern cultural garbage stuff. And there's another artist who does something similar with where it's like a very dark moody still lifes of flower arrangements and then like has them glitch out which is very interesting too so it looks like you're seeing something glitching out on a computer screen but uh, yeah oh i'm working on keeping one plant alive at the moment that's it that's my focus just gotta keep him alive but prior to him, I killed everything. Hey, if you got one guy going, let's call it a win. Take our wins and we can get them. 
That's my that's my philodendron. Like at least him I don't seem to have to really worry about. And the weird thing is like I know exactly how long I've had that plant because he came from an arrangement that I kept of plants from my dad's funeral. Like that's where that plant came from and that's why I know how old it was, how long I've had it. So, I don't know, it's weird. There's Watson. Hi, Bobby. Come say hi. Oh, you don't have a cat. always concerned about food. And he still has a half an hour till it's lunchtime. Really sorry to hear about your dad passed so early. That's a thank you. It was cancer, you know. It's very awful stuff. It is the worst. Funny, after he passed, I became, like, convinced that... Oh, hello, you. Oh, you're gonna be cute and get up on my lap? Hmm? Hi. This is, like, the only time he gets on my lap ever. Like, he'll cuddle up next to me, but... Rarely ever does he... <laughs> now he's just... Picking his tail everywhere. Goofy guy. Yeah, it's getting a little distorted here. Just to shape a little bit. Maybe allow that line to kind of get a little fuzzy. Okay, back home now. Oh, nice. That was a quick commute. Mixed results with gardening. <laughs> I made the mistake of trying to rent a garden plot some years ago. Oh my gosh. It was such a disaster. when I already have like a black thumb to begin with. And then I decided to rent a space that was, what was it like a, a 20 foot garden plot, 20 some, 20, it was like 15 by 20 feet. Oh man, I had, I just thought, I don't know why I thought that I could handle that, but it was, I was so far over my head. It just so got away from me because I was working full time then too at an office and you couldn't, like how could a person keep up with the weeds there. I couldn't get there every day. I couldn't spend hours weeding every t every week. 
It was just so out of hand. Just keep your tail out of the paint, little cat. Hmm? Nice stinker. You're just helping. You know, if you get your fur in the paint, I have to run you to the sink and give you a little bath, so I know you don't want that. And we might, we just might be speaking from experience. Just possibly. <laughs> huh. All right, back to smaller brush here. I think it's come out great. I love how it pops against the black. Oh, thank you gonna add a little bit more saturated colors in I think my little bit of a smaller brush here <laughs> Getting pushed out of my chair by a fuzzy butt oh my gosh Well, excuse me, sir. <laughs> ah, one cat. Anyway. Anyway, where were we? We were painting flowers. Because why not? And thinking, thinking back up to those types of, like the, I keep saying Veritas, and I'm not certain that I'm thinking of the right word. The, that move, the movement of um, still lifes, the Dutch movement of still lifes, that had a lot to do with, like, death. Um, the thing about that is it, it does make still lifes much more interesting when you think about that you can actually, instead of just painting a thing you're looking at, whatever, a bowl of fruit and pear and orange, like you can really get, you can make a say, still life say something. And I think that's uh, a harder thing to do, but through choices that you make in your materials and Anything else? Your brush strokes, your color palette. You can absolutely have a still life communicate an idea. And I think that that's pretty cool. And it's something I haven't explored a lot, so kind of exploring a little bit today. And it's kind of why I chose this particular photo, too, is that it's like if you had to assign some meaning to this photo, I mean, there is a moodiness to it. I think that there is definitely maybe a little bit sense of loneliness in there. It's all very interesting to play with how can you make a couple of flowers in a pot say something. Also, these flowers, I can't kill. <laughs> They're safe. They're safe from me.
Oh my god, are you trying to scratch my chair apart? Watson, behave you. My studio assistant sometimes creates more troubles than he helps me solve. Yes, I get that when I'm reading, it's kind of like I start daydreaming about what concept I've read or visualizing it and then snap back. Oh yeah, finish the page, Jim. <laughs> that's that for me, that's like, oh yeah, restart the page. <laughs> okay, time for me to turn in. Thanks for the stream. Hopefully I'll catch you all next week. Good night, Arisat. Thank you for, thanks for hanging out. Okay. It's just starting to get to that point where the paint's kind of wanting to be sort of dried up and, and a little gross on the palette. But I do think that I can at least finish this before it forces me to concede. Get a slightly smaller brush and go back and pull that uh, stem back in where I've lost it next to the background. I were smarter about this, I would use, um, I would be using a palette knife for mixing my paints a little bit more than my brush.
Alrighty. Yeah, I'm at that point where the paint isn't flowing very nicely. So I have to almost like add a little bit of water or I could be adding a medium, I suppose, too. But at this stage of the game, I'm not gonna mess around with that too much. Memento Mori. <laughs> Thanatos, yep. That's it. That's probably not the word I was saying. My memory is quite terrible for details. I always really struggled with um, art history classes in college because they required memorization names, dates, and that sort of thing and I just don't I don't have a good mind for that I'll remember the piece and possibly the artist if it's something that really catches my attention I will not necessarily remember I will almost never remember the date it was made I can probably remember a movement just because you can kind of tell that by looking at the piece and like if you know the movements you can determine that information but you're okay you're not gonna starve it's not time yet I know I know oh it's so hard I know <laughs> how much drama goodness sake all the drama in the world hello again <laughs> you just keep your nose out of the paint is all all right Yeah, back when I was uh, teaching for a bit, the kids, and I had them do a still life project, and my goodness, the groans. Just, like, torture, right? Um, I did a little presentation where I pulled up some of, like, some of the more interesting cultural things, and, uh, and also... Also, some of like the contemporary things that people are doing that were interesting to try to, you know, be like, see, it's not just necessarily boring stuff. It can be pretty cool, pretty interesting. Um, and it ended up being kind of like a little uh, education for me, too. If you're not careful, you can always learn something new.
head is very dramatic. The one thing that starts to happen when my paints start to get a little like texturally off from being out for you know nearly two hours is that um, <clears throat> it gives you much like choppier brush strokes in the artwork. Watson, you're fine. My cat thinks that he's starving to death right now. And yes, it's very sad. I know. He's just going to die if he doesn't eat soon. <laughs> right, little butt? I always really like the effect of mixing a little bit of um, yellow oxide into with pinks. I just gotta watch for it being like too muddy. And I could see the advantage of doing this particular painting in um, an oil paint rather than acrylic. I'm getting that nice ability to kind of just mix the colors on the palette a little, a little better.
why I can't resist sticking my fingers directly in the paints. Who knows? Okay, pretty close to about having this guy, I think. What's in? Get sadder and sadder. Watch your nose, Stinker. I'm kind of at a point of just sort of fussing with some details here. here at least a little bit All right. Well, I definitely overjudged on a few of the paints on my palette, which always makes me not happy, but... But I think... Pretty much... Pretty much got it.
I know I keep saying like, oh, I'm done, I'm there, and then I keep messing around, but... Ah, welcome to it. This is the life of an artist. Nothing's ever... Always hard to say that it's actually done. <laughs> There's always more that can be done to it. For good or bad. The trick is always figuring out when you start to do more bad than good, and sometimes that means you just need to walk away for a little bit. Sometimes that means that you're just... You need to be done. Period. One more thing that I would like to fix, maybe? Just got a little lost on that stem over there. I'm not quite getting that right. Hold on. <laughs> Gonna get there. Okay, that's a little better. So if I were going to do anything else to this, it would probably be another layer on the background after this was really dried and then it needs to it's a little um wavy you can see some wave in the paper kind of like watercolor paper would i've got really saturated it with a lot of paint um so the paper needs to dry paint needs to cure a bit and then, yeah, if I were going to do something else, it would probably be a second layer, another layer on the background. Maybe add a little bit more. Yeah, it's a, you gotta kind of walk a balance of having any texture in the background and pulling away any attention from the subject matter you don't want that to be like you don't want it to be busy even if you want to have some like textural 
elements, some brush strokes and things. You gotta watch, watch the balance. But there we go. A little two hour flower painting. A little time to study. So, yep, I think that's a good place to call it. Pretty happy with how it turned out. Veritas. Yeah, Veritas is truth in Latin. Vanitas. Vanity. Okay. Yeah, I my brain just mixes things. If it's similar, I'll just go there. It just goes there, and I'm like, I know it's probably not it, but that's what I'm pulling out at the moment. It's terrible. Recall is awful. Um, But thank you for it. <laughs> clarifying that because I didn't want to take the time to stop and look it up but I probably would have after the stream at some point because I hate it when I can't remember something all right yeah okay good place to call it and uh yeah thank you for Anybody who stopped in and watched and joined in, thank you to everybody who's kept me company <laughs> while I've been working on this. I appreciate that a whole lot. And I hope that uh, everybody has a wonderful week. Weekend now that we're, cl it's almost the weekend, Thursday. And yeah, awesome. Good luck with any creative projects you're working on. I hope that. Everybody's got some inspiration and energy to work on the things they want to work on. And I hope to see you all Monday. That's when the stream is actually at 7 p.m. I <laughs> just get going doing things because I put that on when I scheduled this one. 7 p.m. Nope, not 7 p.m. Not today. Anyway, yes, okay. Have a good one, guys. I'll uh, hopefully see you next week. Bye.